Next up is Lauren. While you're coming up here, uh, Lauren, what is what time of the day is your favorite for getting a page? What was that? When do you prefer to get paged for an incident? Oh God, what? <laughs> prefer to get paged? You could say never. <laughs> never ever. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone. Oh, wait one sec. I'll wait for you. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Oh, sure. It's oh not, no. Yeah, it's not advancing. Try it again. I'm gonna have to do this manually. One sec. <laughs> Anybody got a stopwatch? I was on the last slide. Thank you. That is brilliant. <laughs> very, very good troubleshooting. I'm going to hire you totally. It's amazing. <laughs> All right. There you go. So, my name is Lauren. I've worked as a sysadmin, DevOps engineer, EMT, and site reliability engineer. Today, I work as a director of reliability engineering for Nike. We're going to talk about how becoming a first responder helped me combat burnout and made me a better engineer. So, years ago, I decided to quit working in IT full time for a little while. I was burned out. I was physically and emotionally exhausted as a result of dealing with the death of a parent and a poor job choice. So what does being burned out even mean? So this means you are in a state of physical, emotional, mental exhaustion caused by large amounts of stress. Every day was a really bad day for me, and I felt pretty trapped. So here's the thing about quitting your job. So many of us have obligations, right, that prevent us from being able to just do that without consequences. At the time, I told my husband, I am so overworking in tech. And he didn't understand that. He asked me a really fair question. So why would you quit something that you're good at? Hmm. When I thought about it, I realized, yeah, you know what? I am good at something that gives me a decent salary. So why would I stop doing that? Would any of you stop doing that? You're good at it. Why would you quit? Anyway, all I knew was that I was overworking in tech, and I wanted out. Before I knew it, I got through EMT school. I found myself riding the ambulance as a first responder. I started working for a major hospital system. Exploring an alternative to working in tech provided me with a different perspective on a lot of different things. Doing EMS introduced me to the best and the absolute worst in humanity. So here's what I learned from that that I'm going to share with you today. So there are going to be times when you have to make decisions with limited amounts of information. And these decisions, they're going to impact someone's life major way. Sometimes you're going to make mistakes. So what matters is how you address those mistakes in the future. That's it. So as I spent time removed from the situation that led to my own burnout, I realized that, hey, you know what? I want to go back to working in tech. At this point, it had been almost a year. I was terrified. I did not know if I could go back. I thought it was way too long. When you're an individual contributor, that's a long time. At this stage, the DevOps movement had been well underway. Site reliability engineering was becoming commonplace. I loved, I still love the use of software engineering to solve operation problems. I love being an SRE, and I still do. So at some point, I realized that my time off had prepared me to manage incidents well. When responding to a 911 call, you learn quickly that the dispatcher sometimes gets it wrong. What you have when you arrive at someone's home looks nothing like what was described to you over the radio. This is a lot like dealing with an alert that ends up being completely irrelevant to a problem. To deal with this, you have to realize that having confidence is key. To gain confidence, one has to become comfortable being a little bit uncomfortable. So in EMS, you learned that an adrenaline rush is caused by a hormone called cortisol. It's the fight or flight response. When you first start riding the ambulance and hear the tone go off over the radio, this rush kicks into overdrive. Oh, shit, I got to get to the call. So as you gain more exposure to that, the rush becomes manageable. Over time, you can take that energy and channel it into providing good patient care. In this way, you learn how to embrace discomfort, channel that energy, and use it for something good. As an SRE, you have to do the same to manage uptime for systems. So maybe you've been listening to me this whole time. You've decided, man, you know what? I am burned out in my job. I have had it, and I want out. You want to figure out how to explore this and deal with your own version of burnout. So I'm going to get one thing out of the way right now. This isn't a talk trying to convince you to become an EMT. There's more than one way to combat your burnout. 
taking a break from your job to explore another option outside of tech, that's just one way to do it. That's what I did. When exploring other job options, starting small can never really hurt you. Starting small makes quitting your job far less overwhelming. There's lots of reasons why you may not be able to quit right away, so don't make it perfect. Come up with a game plan that will ensure your basic needs will be met. So part of your game plan should be sorting out your support system at home, very important. They will help sustain you through all the complex feelings you are going to go through when trying something new. However, they may not be totally supportive in the beginning, and you may have some questions to answer. Working through these questions can only help you on your journey. It's difficult to leave something you're familiar with, especially when you think you'll hate it. You're going to stumble along the way. Just remember, be kind to yourself. Take a break every now and then. Realize what you're doing is hard for a lot of different people. And finally, just remember, dealing with burnout is a marathon. It is not a race. It's possible that after combating burnout for the first time, you're going to end up feeling burned out again, and that is OK. You'll get better at recognizing it, managing it, and realizing that dealing with it doesn't necessarily mean the end of your tech career. That's it. <laughs>